here I am at the cabin. I've been uh, working all day today. I'm, I'm tired and my shoulder hurts. This one right here, I broke it. I broke my collarbone and separated my shoulder when I was in high school playing football. It's a, a great story I thought I would share with you um, because I think there's a great lesson to be learned. And it's a great reminder for me today um, I was in the ninth or 10th grade. I don't remember. I was pretty young in my high school tenure and I had played right guard on the offensive line and I had played defensive end on the defensive line and I'd had a little run at trying to be a quarterback and, and a couple other positions. But the truth of the matter was, is I was not a very good football player. In fact, I often joke that I made a lot of highlight reels for people's recruiting videos for high, for college, but it was always somebody else's recruiting video. In other words, they made a highlight at my expense, right? Because I was just an average athlete. But the last football game I ever played in in my high school career, we were playing Daphne High School, and the game was tied 36 to 36, I think it was, and my, my best friend, uh, Danny Dees, had just caught a two-point conversion to tie the game up. And, or no, 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 we had gone ahead. That's what it was. We had gone ahead, and, and, and his two-point conversion put us up by a full seven points, and we were jumping for joy, and we were celebrating because they were a big rival. And, and so um, we – I have messed up the story. Let me back up. I'm getting old and I'm getting forgetful. Um, we we had gone ahead. Danny caught the two-point conversion. We had gone ahead. And then um, they ran a touchdown back on the preceding kickoff, on the following kickoff. And so they tied it up 36 to 36. So they kicked off to us. There was less than a minute to go in the game. I was also on the return team. And so... Um, they kicked a little squib kick so that our return man, who was one of the best athletes on the team, didn't get a chance to run the ball back for a touchdown. And guess who caught it? Well, yours truly. And let me just tell you, I looked like Herschel Walker out there running that ball, right? Like the Heisman Trophy pose. I, I, I must have been, I'm surprised that after I, I ran the ball back as I did, that they did not nickname me like White Lightning or or, or some other profoundly important nickname that had to do with the prowess and speed that I demonstrated on the field. Mm, of course, it could have been because I took about 10 steps and I looked up and I saw we, we ran a, what we called a wedge play. And I saw the wedge on a return, on a kick return. I saw the wedge form right up in front of me and I thought, this is beautiful. This is going to be a touchdown. I had visions of grandeur. And I thought, I am fixing to be famous. I am fixing to win the game, and, and the girls are going to scream my name, and there'll be ticker tape parades and all this, you know, the lunacy of a teenage boy, right? And so I fell in behind the wedge, and I thought, here it comes, touchdown city, here I am. And the lights went out. And the next thing I remember, I was laying flat on my back, looking straight up at the sky, just like this. And there was a guy named Kelvin Moore. Hey, Kelvin. <laughs> Standing over the top of me. And, and he was like, you all right? You all right? You all right? Kelvin went on to play linebacker at the University of Alabama for three years. I think he even went pro afterwards. He probably has me to credit for getting his full ride to the University of Alabama because I know that that play made a highlight reel because he hit me so hard. It was like getting hit by a truck loaded with bricks, Okay. And it knocked me clean out, broke my shoulder, separ uh, broke my collarbone, separated my shoulder. It was horrendous. Um, so here's why I tell you that. There's two points of, of this story I want you to remember. Visions of grandeur are dangerous. When, what, actually, what I, why I thought this story was important today was because I, I've been building this cabin now for 14 months. And when I started, I had visions of grandeur. I thought, oh, I'll be through with this in three months. I can lick this out, no problem. And, uh, you know, I am, uh, I'm a good carpenter and I'm good with the, the, the tools that are necessary. And I, I got the, the mental ability to make it all happen. And, my, and the visions of grandeur said, this is going to go flawlessly, that I'm going to score a touchdown building this cabin. 
but here I am 14 months later. And so here's what I want to remind you of point number one is that sometimes the devil, it's not that he makes me get knocked out on the football field. It's not that he made me um, work slow or not have enough time on the cabin. I only work it on the weekends and sometimes after work. The, 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 the devil gets in our head and he says, oh, you're going to score a touchdown. Oh, you're so good that they should call you Grease Lightning. Oh, you're so fast that you can outrun everybody else on the team. And, and the vision of grandeur is the manipulation. The, the, the vision of grandeur is, oh, you can build this cabin in 90 or 120 days. And then when we don't do it, we feel defeated. We feel let down. We feel um, somehow degraded because we didn't meet the expe expectation of the vision of grandeur. But that was the lie to begin with. And so be careful about visions of grandeur because sometimes that's the deception that's only designed to uh, be so grand that we could never meet the expectation. And then we feel like somehow I'm not as good a carpenter as I am. I mean, I'm, what do you mean I'm not a great football player, right? The reality is I was an average football player at best. I don't even know if I was average. The reality is I'm not a very good carpenter, right? And so... Don't let not meeting a grandiose vision be something that discourages you. Just recognize that your expectations were unreasonable to begin with, and that's okay. That's okay. The other thing I wanted to tell you was this, is that usually out of hardship comes something good. Because that's just kind of how God works, right? Noah spent all that time building the ark. You can't tell me that wasn't hardship. And out of that came something good, right? Moses spent all that time leading the Israelites around in the desert. And out of that came something good for the Israelites, right? Um, Jesus spent all that hard time carrying the cross. And out of that came something good. So um, Kelvin Moore and I became good friends. He, he took pity on me, I suppose, because he had about killed this poor little average kid. And, and he, let me tell you something, he was a man in high school. He was a stud and he was a great athlete. And I'm so proud of the career that he had at Alabama and, and, and from there too. But we became friends after that, all because he, he waylaid me. He looked at, he didn't do anything wrong. He hit me like a man. I just wasn't strong enough to take it. My body wasn't designed for that. And, and but out of that, out of that hardship, he called me, checked on me. He, a couple of days later, I get a call. That was when we still had the rotary dial phones. Hello. Hey, this is Kelvin Moore. I just want to check on you. Um, that meant something to me, right? Um, we would see each other from time to time after that, not only in high school, but also in college. And we'd always reminisce and we'd, you know, uh, just kind of uh, walk through uh, some of those moments together. And it, and it was one of those things where, but for that hardship we would have never had that friendship and so sometimes some of the best friendships come from the hardest places and so I, I don't know right now where you're struggling at or who you're struggling with or what relationships you're struggling with but I, I, I just want you to consider maybe is there um, something there that you need to dig a little deeper for because sometimes hardships lead to the best friendships okay hey look um, I, I, I'm I'm tired. This this hardship, this cabin, and mosquitoes are out. My shoulder hurts. Like, I'm just, it's wearing me out. So, Hannah's texted me and said, where are you at? So, I'm going home. I'm going to go get me a shower. I'm going to eat some good supper. And, and I'm going to probably take me to Advil, and I'm going to sleep really good tonight. So, I hope you all do, too. Take care. Y'all have a great day.